So my brothers and sisters, I'm going to continue on in 2 Samuel chapter 2. You have to remember here, there's a lot of things that took place. So Abner, he came to Hebron, right, to speak to David, and he was killed by Joab. Joab was upset with Abner for killing his brother, um, Asahel. So what happened was, as a result, David, he was upset, and he told Joab this that all this house from generation to come will have physical defects, okay? I'm just wrapping it up. I'm just putting it in a nutshell that they're going to have physical effects. Now, you have to keep in mind that Joab and Asahel, these men, they were men of war. They were valiant men, okay? So this curse is going to affect them significantly as men and warriors. So the things that was going to come upon them were physical defects, death, okay? It says uh, they'll fall by the sword, leprosy, which is sickness, physical handicaps, okay, poverty, famine, all these things happened. As a result, all these were the things that David said would come upon the house of Joab and generations down because he struck Abner. Now the thing is, well, was Abner, was, was Joab, was Joab wrong for, for, cause back then they, listen, they avenged. So why was it that David would be upset about the death of Abner, who was Saul's, now let me give y'all some background here. Abner was Saul's chief captain. So he was a captain of all the hosts of his army. So he was a man of war. The background with Abner was that when David was appointed, anointed king of Judah, he went and appointed Saul's son, okay? He appointed him because he, he didn't respect David, okay? So he appointed him, um, um, Ishbosheth, he appointed him king over Mahanaman, Mahana, Mahanaim, I can't really say. It. Okay, so he appointed him. And then what he did when Abner, who was a who was a uh, a chief captain of the armies, he went in and slept with one of the concubines that belonged to Saul. Ishbosheth spoke to him about it, attempted to correct him. Abner got upset and decided, "I'm going to take the kingdom from you because I appointed you." Okay, so he was doing all this stuff, and the, in the meantime, while he was doing all these things, going here, going here, talking to this person, talking to this person, to try to get the kingdom away from Ishbosheth because he corrected him. In the midst of that, when he went to Hebron, Joab killed him because Abner had killed his younger brother, Asahel, um, in a battle. So my question at the time was, well, why would David be so upset? Because Abner was shady anyway. Why was David upset? Because Joab avenged his brother. But here's the thing. <laughs> David never laid a finger on Saul, even when he had two separate opportunities to take his life. Because, listen, what he, re what he respects is a person's position, number one. And number two, he's not going to move forward with anything unless he consults the Lord. So the problem that he had with that was, listen, Joab was in his camp and he had done this evil because he was not directed by God to go lay his hands on Abner. So my brothers and sisters, here is the lesson. Do not raise your hand straight, stretch your hands out to avenge a wrong, to strike somebody, even if it's wrong, unless, <laughs> listen, God's not going to tell you to strike anybody anyway. So let me tell you, do not let, uh, stretch your hand to do wrong, to avenge something that someone did, even if they're wrong. You need to learn to wait on God because listen, as a result of doing that, Joab's family later on ended up having these men of war and valiant men. They end up being cursed from generation to generation with poverty, death, sickness, physical handicaps, famine, all right? All of that, poverty. Your one action, your moment to... 
clap back, your moment to say back, your moment to do whatever to somebody is going to cost you dearly. You may feel good that you expose this person. You may feel good that you sent a copy of the text messages and you sent a copy of the email or you sent that screenshot of the picture you took of that person doing wrong when all along they were saying you were doing wrong when they were doing wrong. So you make an impulsive move, but it's going to cost you, my brothers and sisters. When you want to avenge yourselves, it's going to cost you. And not just you, but your lineage, my brothers and sisters. So be careful how you want to stretch forth your hand to do something, to avenge yourself. Be careful how you feel. You let your feelings get involved where your heart gets a pumping and you feel that heat in your face and that feeling in your stomach and your hands start shaking and you can hear your heart beating in your ear and you don't see nothing but red. This is the time that you better lock yourself in somewhere and be still because you can make a grave mistake. And this is what God wants me to tell you all today. There's situations that you're in that people's getting on your last nerves. They've lied on you. They put you out there and you just about tired of it. And you are getting ready to do this. God is saying, don't do it. Don't do it. Because you're going to put a curse on yourself. He didn't send you to do that. He didn't tell you to say that. He didn't tell you to post that. He didn't tell you to get on the phone and say that. He didn't tell you that you're supposed to make sure that because you have the power to do something. Some of y'all in positions and when you listen, you're in certain positions where you have the power to make some moves, to make that person's life miserable, to make stuff harder for them. And you're doing that. Some of you at work, there's somebody, they've been getting on your nerves or whatever. And so you're deliberately going to, listen, shred their request for leave and not and deny them leave. There's some people you do certain things where you want to set them up. You're trying to find everything they're doing wrong so you can set them up. But God is saying, even if that person is lazy, even if that person has poor work ethics, you don't need to pursue them to set them up. You don't need to be doing things, setting traps. To get rid of them because you're tired of them getting away with stuff. God is saying that stuff's going to turn around on you and you're going to end up losing your job. Don't do it. In everything, children of God, behave yourself wisely. Behave yourself wisely. Stop trying to be an avenger. Mm. I have a video it's called Avengers. Take off your cape. Avengers. If you go on my search engine on my page and you put in Avengers, it'll pop up. Stop trying to stop trying to vindicate yourself. It's hard. I know. I've been there. I've been there. But I've also seen the benefits of waiting on God. I've also and my brothers and sisters, you don't need to see it. Some of y'all is like, well, if I don't see it, you want to hear that they maybe got in a car accident. You want to hear that the bottom fell out. God's not going to let you hear that because you want to hear that. You want to hear that the 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 church burned down. That's probably not going to be how it's going to go down. Just because you don't see and hear it don't mean that God hasn't moved. Just because everything look all peachy don't mean that stuff is not going on. But what God does not want us to do is to rejoice when those who have done us wrong, when God is dropping recompense on them, that you're not saying, mm, see, I knew it. God don't like ugly because the minute you do that, it turns around. The spirit of vengeance, the spirit of recompense draws to darkness. It comes to eradicate darkness. <laughs> so that person that go around lying on you and doing all these different things, that spirit is sent to eradicate because guess what? They're just not listening. But the minute you open up your mouth and darkness come out your mouth, that spirit turns. Okay. Let's go this way. Stop it. Guard your mouth. Wait on the Lord. David probably felt like Job had all rights to feel this way. But what David always did, he will always seek God first for guidance. Do I go up, Lord? Do I take over, Lord? Do I go up? Will this, will, Lord, do I go into this battle? Will the Amalekites be, be given to us in victory? 
Do I go? What do I do, Lord? And that's the habit you and I need to be in at all times. Stop doing random stuff, okay? When you do random things, when you operate randomly, then expect random stuff to come up in your life. That's any and anything, okay? Come on, guys. We, we just got to gotta get to a different place. Oh, come on. There's work to be done, my brothers and sisters. Peace out.